If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. Get yourself gone. Go for it. Thank you. Well, the, the sports topic of the day is going to have to be the Orioles. Uh, with the draft pick, uh, Manny Machado, who has not signed yet, everyone seems to be talking about that's not going to be a problem. He's going to get done. Uh, a couple years ago, Matt Wieters was finished probably with three, four minutes before deadline. Last year, Strasburg with the Nationals the same way. And you've you got to be very concerned as an Oriole fan that this gets taken care of because when you look at our, our prospects, you know, we're, we're growing the arms <laughs> and, and we're, we're buying the bats. And as it turns out, the arms aren't necessarily certainly ready for the Major League. But we're really depleted of, of position players down there. Uh, we traded for Bell last year, and he's coming up, and he's have, going through his struggles. But beyond that, there's not much in the way of minor league talent in terms of field and position players. And, and when the draft came around a couple months ago, and everyone was talking about the top three picks, and we had the third, and the Orioles couldn't be dumb enough to pass on it, and, and you take the shortstop from, from South Florida, Manny Machado, you're very excited about the fact you could add, you know, the, that comparison to Alex Rodriguez are probably ridiculous. But you need that kind of talent in your farm system, and you need it now. And, you, and you'd wish maybe that it would be done, that he'd be playing the way the kid is from Auburn, uh, Trent Mummy, I think is his name. He's playing uh, center field for Aberdeen, and he's doing really well. And, and you, need, you need more of that if you're an Oriole fan. And, and so today's a, a big day for the Orioles with respect to that. You've got to get this kid signed. I know a couple years ago they changed the compensation, where if you don't get that draft pick, you get a, a draft pick very similar to that in the following draft, which, which would be great. There's some college arms coming out next year that, that we could have. Uh, but you, re you really need this guy. I know Boris is the agent, and it's a last-second deadline. And uh, So I'm going to be up late tonight trying to pay attention to that. Of course, I'll, I'll probably get an NST tax letting me know if it's been done or not done. So I'm looking forward to that. And then with the Orioles, you have what I blogged about last week called My Fear Versus the Plan. And, and we all know the plan, uh, Andy McPhail. You're going to, going to grow the arms, buy the bats. It's interesting that his uh, two big free agent signings in three years now have been a uh, two-year, $10 million contract for Koji and a two-year, $12 million contract for Mike Gonzalez. So there's been no example of buying the bats at all, uh, with the exception of that disaster at first base this year, Atkins. Um, but you gotta, you got to be very concerned that this, very fearful that this is going to, the success we're having right now, going 9-4 under Buck, might lead some, some credibility within the organization that their plan is the correct one. And that's really disheartening as an Oriole fan because you, you look at the schedule and you look at the record, you see there are 41 wins and they're a game and a half or two games ahead of Pittsburgh for last place and that's kind of being celebrated right now. And the whole thing's just a joke. We, we really need to take it, take it down and blow it up and do what you need to do. We do have some talent on the roster I like, obviously. Um, at the top of the lineup between Roberts and Marquecas. That's a, I don't know what, what going forward, what you're going to do with them in terms of one and two or two and three hitter. Um, you can't help but not ignore that Felix P.A. is actually playing like, like everyone was hoping he was going to play. I think he's batting now 295. He's going to have the rest of the year to prove himself in left field to maintain a 290, 295 hitter. And that would look great in the top of the lineup. I'm not going to give Andy any success, any success yet. I still have, want to see how the rest of the season goes. But as top of the lineups go, if you have Felix, um, Pi, PA, and Brian and Nick at the top, that's really good. And, and, then, and then you really have to look at, at Luke Scott. Luke has been a player who's obviously been very streaky, but he's really, really turned it on here where he's, you know, streaky hitters don't necessarily hit 290 um, over the course of the year. Um, and so he's really turn himself around into a more legitimate first base left field DH. I see him obviously more first base DH. And if he can hit 25 home runs, you add him, not in the four hole, but if you're looking at someone down the five, six, seven with, with Luke and Adam and Matt, that's a respectable, respectable five, six, seven. What this team needs is a four. And I don't know how they're going to get that. That's a struggle, uh, a lot of debate over the next couple months. Obviously, Adam Dunn would be, would be a great choice some free agent signings, some trades, something along those lines. But, but that's where I see the Orioles going, and I, and I hope, uh, I wish them all the six, best success. There he is, uh, John West, uh, joining us here on the WNST tryouts in our uh, American Idol. American Idol. If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net.